Hi, welcome back to Grains and Small Places. If you're new around here, my name is Kara. Welcome to my channel. And we focus on fresh milled flour around here. So if you're into that, then click that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any of my content or recipes. And this week is Matt's birthday. So he requested a yellow cake. And I know a lot of you have been requesting a yellow cake recipe made with fresh milled flour and no sifting. <laughs> so you can, of course, sift it if you want to, but this recipe is specifically written without it being sifted. And we're going to top it with a chocolate ganache buttercream. Now, if you're looking for a yellow cake because you're not into chocolate and you don't like chocolate, that's okay. You can top this with any buttercream or any frosting or even leave it plain or put fresh fruit on it, whatever you prefer. So you don't have to make it with the frosting that I'm making, but if you want to, go ahead and join me and let's get started. Okay, so to make our yellow classic cake, we're going to use soft white wheat. So soft white wheat is what you wanna use anytime you're making something delicate like a cake pastry or something like that. So I'm gonna, whoops. I'm gonna zero out my scale here and we're gonna use about 300 grams. I will make sure to put a link in the description box below for the recipe. It'll have measurements and weight for grams and that will also have like cups if you prefer to measure that way. However, I will say it is a little bit more accurate with weight, but I understand that not every baker likes to bake like that. So I'm going to measure out 301 grams. Okay, perfect. I really love these little containers. I get asked about them all the time. If you're interested in them, I will put a link to these, my mixer, my mill, and everything down in the description box below. That way you can take a look at anything if you have a question about it. I'm gonna head on over to my mill. And I have a coupon code to share with you for $20 off your mill if you're interested in any of the mills or mixers at Nutramill or Bosch. The coupon code is down in the description box below along with the link where you can grab your 20 bucks off. Okay, so while you're milling your flour, you can go ahead and prepare your baking pans. And what I like to do, these, these are eight inch cake pans. So if you have a different size, then you may have to adjust your baking time because one of the worst things we can do with a cake is to over bake it because that can make it dry and crumbly. So make sure, uh, if you're not sure, to check to see the size of your baking pans. But I like to just cut these out. I just, you saw I just traced the bottom of them. And then I just like to cut out my parchment paper circles. That way I can line the bottom of my cake pan and then I don't have to worry about it sticking to the bottom. We still will need to grease these. So what I like to do is grease or butter or whatever you wanna use the bottom of your pan and then lay in your paper and then you're gonna to wanna to grease the top of the paper also. So nice, good fit. You wanna make sure that it's not coming up the edges or anything like that. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect either. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, like I was saying, and spray the bottom of this pretty good. Lay my parchment paper in there and then spray the top of the parchment paper and all the way up the sides of my pan. Don't skip this step or you will have a cake that is stuck inside of your pan. So whether you wanna use spray or butter or I know they've got mixtures like that out there, all over the internet talking about different pastes and things you can make, any of those, whatever your favorite is, is fine. Okay, I'm just gonna set these to the side. Okay, so now our fresh milled flour is all done being milled and we're gonna add our dry ingredients. So one of the main things we wanna add to this is a starch and that helps basically make like a cake flour. So I'm using potato starch because we have corn sensitivities in my family. You can use corn starch, tapioca starch, any of those starches. A quarter cup, we're gonna add that to our freshly milled flour. And just mix that in. I did not sift my flour. Of course, if you wanted to, you could. You may have to adjust the weight of the flour that you're using if you decide to do that, but I find it to not be necessary. Okay, and then we're going to be using 
a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of baking powder. Now, when you are using your leavening agents, a couple things to know. First, you wanna make sure they're less than six months old from being open because these do go bad and then you don't get any rise anymore. So if you are baking muffins or cakes or cupcakes and you find you have no rise, that could be the issue. The other problem is, is um, a lot of times they do recommend to stir or shake the can before you get into them. And that also is helpful. And I really like to use this non-added aluminum baking powder. So sometimes it's hard to find. I can also put a link to that below. Um, occasionally you can find it at, at the grocery store. It just depends on where you're located. Okay, and then if you are using unsalted butter, you will want to add salt to this. I am using salted butter today, so I'm not gonna add the salt. Okay, I've grabbed my Ankerson mixer and today I'm going to use the plastic bowl. Now, if you decide that you want one of these mixers, it does come with this plastic bowl um, attachment, but I find most things can be made with the metal bowl. So you first put on the shaft here and then you put this on and it seats down where the handle is facing me and the spout is facing away. And then the little gear goes inside of here and then the paddles just click and they click on. So, all right, so these are the beater paddles. You're gonna use these for creaming butter, for cookies, things like that. But honestly, for making cookies, I just use the metal bowl with the roller attachment. It creams butter beautifully. If you'd like to see how well it creams butter and sugar together for one batch of cookies, my ginger snap cookie recipe, you can see that. Okay, so to this, I'm going to add very softened butter. So you can see it's not melted. We don't want melted butter and we don't want cold butter. It needs to be room temperature and very soft. So you can see it's very soft. I'm barely having to push and that goes in there. So I'm gonna just put this in just a few pieces to help my mixer out here. and leave it to me to make a mess. Okay, so that's a half a cup, 113 grams, or one stick of butter. We're also going to use a half a cup of some oil. I'm using olive oil today. You can use avocado oil or any unflavored liquid oil, liquid at room temperature oil. So we're doing a half a cup of that with our butter. And then we're going to do one and two thirds cup of sugar. Now this is just some raw cane sugar. Again, if you prefer to make recipes by weight, in the description box below, I will have this recipe and it will be written in both weight and volume. I know that sometimes I go back and forth, but for me, it's easier to just do the volumes for things once it's already in my mixer and then do the weights for like my flour and um, actually my liquids, I went ahead and pre-weighed. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start this out on low. And then once it starts to incorporate, then I will go ahead and turn the speed up a little. Maybe about six o'clock. And it should get nice and light and creamy and then also increase in volume. So it is important to make sure that all of your ingredients are room temperature. So I went ahead this morning and I sat out my half and half. I sat out my yogurt. I sat out my eggs, my butter, everything, because we don't want to add cold ingredients into our mixture because it can seize up our butter. It will take away that creaming that we just spent all that hard work doing in our mixer. So we wanna make sure that all of our ingredients are room temperature. Okay, this is starting to look nice, but about halfway through, we need to make sure that we are scraping down our sides just to make sure that everything is incorporating nicely. I'm using my Christmas spatula. If you've seen some of my older videos, you know how special this one is to me. <laughs> okay, everything looks good. There was a couple little patches there of just 
butter. So let me just wipe that off. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, whoops. Go ahead and finish off creaming. So we're gonna cream the butter for about three to five minutes. We wanna make sure that it's become lighter in color and we wanna make sure that it has increased in volume. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let me take a look with these out. Everything looks to be incorporated nicely. Now, because this is not straight butter and sugar, it's not going to be as creamy as like butter and sugar only because we've got some oil in here, but you can see it's lighter in color. It's definitely increased in volume. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to adding the eggs. We're gonna add those in one at a time. And again, we want these to be room temperature eggs so it doesn't seize up our mixture here. So here's the eggs. I'm gonna just scoot this forward. Okay. So I've learned from all of you that it is wise to crack my eggs into a separate container first when I have fresh farm eggs. So <laughs> I'm doing that today. So we're just gonna do one egg. And then I'm gonna turn that on low and I'm just gonna mix it in, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds before I add in the next egg. I guess that saves me from when I accidentally get a piece of shell in there from putting it in my cake. So <laughs> win on that one. Okay, last eggs going in. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. Alrighty, mix in that last egg. I hope you can see how nice and beautiful this is becoming. Okay, we're gonna add in a tablespoon of vanilla. So, Cause after all, I know a tablespoon sounds like a lot, but this is a vanilla cake, whoops. And this is our homemade vanilla that we made together many moons ago. Okay. If you'd like to see us making that together, you can, I'll put a link in the description box below to that video. We'll mix that in. Okay, I wanted that to get nice and fluffy. And now we're going to add in a secret ingredient. So we're adding in just white vinegar. I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of white vinegar. Now this one, your, taste, your cake will not taste like vinegar. This just helps with the acidity of the cake, which helps with the rise of the cake. So our acid, which would be our vinegar and our liquids, which we're using yogurt, a little bit of yogurt, those are going to help react with our baking soda and baking powder to give us a nice, lovely rise. So to that, I'm going to add, I've got room temperature yogurt. This is uh, homemade vanilla yogurt. We've made that together too. I have a video showing you how to make your own yogurt and you can also turn this Greek yogurt into cream cheese. So I'm using vanilla yogurt. You could use plain yogurt, Greek yogurt, whatever yogurt you would like to use. So I'm gonna put that in and then we're gonna start mixing that together. Okay, and then now we're going to add in half of our dry mixture. So if you were using all purpose flour right now, you would wanna take out your beaters and finish this by hand because all purpose flour will develop gluten. We're using all soft white wheat here, so we should not get gluten development like we would with a all purpose flour. So I'm gonna put about half of this in here. Try not to make a mess. Okay, about half of that. And then start that on low.
Once that starts to appear to be combining, there's no dry flour left, then I'm going to add in are half and half. So you can use whole milk if you prefer. I just really like the full body half and half that this brings to the cake. So it may affect your texture slightly if you go with just whole milk. You can also use buttermilk. That is a really great option here. In fact, if you want to use all buttermilk instead of half yogurt and half half and half, that would be fine as well. I think that would be really yummy. And the buttermilk has the acid in it for us. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and continue mixing this in. On low, because we don't wanna develop gluten here. I know this, I said you can't develop it with soft white, but we don't want to even a little bit develop it or else we will lose that light cake texture. Okay, just until everything is incorporated. I'm going to pull out my beaters. Let me grab my... Okay, I'm going to pull out my beaters. Just make sure that I got my yummy cake batter off of there. And as you can see, the sides still have some dry cake batter. So we're still going to have to do a little bit of hand mixing here just to make sure everything's incorporated, but we don't want to knock out all that air that we created when we were doing the creaming. So let's just give this a good mix like we're folding in our batter. Okay, make sure that there's nothing on the center post. Okay, and normally I would say pour this right into your pans and put it right into the oven if you were making this with regular flour, but with fresh milk flour, we all know it really likes some time to absorb. So that's why a lot of times my recipes do not start with preheat your oven. I like to use that preheating time to allow this to just kind of sit and work its magic, start letting the fresh milled flour absorb that liquid. So now I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven and then we'll go ahead and put position this out into our pans. Okay, you're gonna bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Now this time will vary for everyone's oven. So it's important to make sure you're checking on your cakes. I'll show you at the end, but when it just starts to pull away from the side of the pan, that's when you know it's done. You can do the toothpick method and put it in as long as no wet batter is coming out. It's okay if there's some crumbs on the toothpick, but you just don't want any wet batter coming out. Then you know your cake is done because again, we don't want to overbake our cake because that's what makes a cake dry. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off. And we're done with that. I'm gonna push this back to the side because we'll use that again for our buttercream. And for the buttercream, we can use this bowl as well, but I think I'm gonna give it a try to use the metal bowl for it because I really like it for creaming butter and sugar together. Okay, let's see if I can weigh our cake to try to make it even. I guess let me make sure these weigh the same. Ah, they don't. My two pans came from the store, same place, everything exactly the same, then they are three grams apart. <laughs> That's interesting to know. Okay, so either way, I'm gonna zero out the pan. So I'm just gonna be weighing the batter. Okay, so while my oven is preheating, I'm gonna try to eyeball this. Four eighty one. Zero it out. Always try to remember to zero out your baking vessel. I've had a couple um, private messages this week saying that they had issues with weighing their flour and it wasn't equaling their wheat berry amount that they milled and all that. And then we discovered that it was that the scale wasn't teared out. So just make sure that you've got that teared out. And I know that's super hard to 
remember sometimes when you're, you know, just getting used to working with a scale. Okay, 558, so we definitely can fit more in this one. Good, I was hoping we could. Okay. If you want to eyeball this, of course you can. Normally I would, but seeing if I can do it a little more professional. <laughs> okay, 620. All right, okay, and then I'm just gonna give these a tap on the counter to get any air bubbles out and to kind of help flatten my tops down. And as soon as my oven is completely preheated, then they will go in the oven and I will let you see them when they're out. They smell really good. Okay, into the oven they go. Okay, so while our cakes are baking, they are looking great and it's smelling delicious in here. I'm going to weigh out our chocolate to make our chocolate ganache. So I need about 12 ounces of, I'm using dark chocolate. Honestly, you could probably use whatever chocolate is your family's favorite. I'm using a little mix of some dark chocolates because I found one that was like 53% and then one that was like 60% and I was really looking for something in between like that 55 range. I just find that that melts much better. So I figure why not try just, you know, adding a little bit of each of these together. <laughs> so you can either do this in the microwave or you can do it in on your stovetop in a saucepan. Generally, you wanna use heavy whipping cream. You all know that we have issues with dairy in our family. So I have not been able to find a heavy whipping cream that we have been able to tolerate. However, I do have an option coming later this month that I will tell you all about. It's coming up, I'm a little bit excited about it. Um, but I have come to learn about this A2 milk. So I guess the secret behind the A2, A2 milk is in the United States, the cows produce an A1, A2 milk in general. So that's the average milk that's, that's provided in the United States that you get from, you know, any grocery store. But They've done some studies and found that if you get the milk proteins that have only A2 in it, so it'd be A2, A2, that that seems to not bother people. Now, this is not a guaranteed you won't have issues with dairy, of course. So I'd, I really would like to give this a try and see how it goes because my options now I can find half and half. So the fair life we've used in the past um, seems to work for our family, but they don't have options for half and half and heavy cream and things, at least in any of the stores that I've been in. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this A2 a shot and we'll see how it goes. It is half and half, not heavy whipping cream. So <laughs> it may not be quite as thick. So I'll make sure to put a link in the description box below for, well, this recipe will have this frosting in it. We need one and a half cups of this half and half. But I also have a different, just plain chocolate buttercream frosting, if you would like that. That one is in my chocolate cake recipe. So if you haven't, if you love chocolate and you haven't tried the chocolate cake recipe, I definitely recommend that. But it's a traditional buttercream with cocoa powder in it. You don't have to melt anything before it comes together pretty quickly. It's, you know, you don't have to wait for all the things to cool down before you continue on. Um, and then of course, if you're not a chocolate fan, you can always use vanilla buttercream or strawberries or whatever your favorite frosting is. You do not have to use this frosting for this cake. I just wanted to try this chocolate ganache frosting, I guess, <laughs> style to see one, try out the A2 milk or A2 half and half, see how it goes. So this is new for me to try this with half and half. Okay, so I just realized this is not gonna be a big enough bowl for what I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this into a larger bowl because I'm gonna have to pour this into here. So we're gonna go ahead and cook this. We don't wanna boil it, but we wanna bring it up to, I guess, almost a boil. So basically a simmer. 
And then once it just starts to bubble, just right when it starts to bubble, so don't walk away, <laughs> um, then you're going to pour this over the chocolate and we're just going to let it sit. So don't mess with it, don't keep stirring it, don't do any of those things because we can cause it to seize up. So just let it sit for about five minutes and then you can come over to it and stir it. We have a, just a little bit of steam building so I know we're getting close. This actually happens pretty quick it looks like. Also, we want to make sure that this is a heat proof uh, vessel that we're pouring this into. I forgot to mention that because we are going to be pouring this almost boiling liquid into this container. So I guess that was pretty important. I should have mentioned that before. <laughs> I'm getting quite a bit of steam, so I'm guessing it's going to start bubbling here just in a moment. Okay, I'm going to move this forward, one, because I can see it's steaming up my lens again, and two, that way it'll make it easier to pour it into here. And again, if you would prefer, you can just heat this in the microwave just until it's boiling and then pour it over the chocolate. You don't want to put necessarily the chocolate in the microwave. I know that's how you would melt it if you were making, you know, something to drizzle on top. But for a ganache, you want to heat the cream or half and half in this case up. And then pour it over the chocolate. You don't want the chocolate to be cold. So room temperature. Okay, we've got bubbles here, so I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to just pour this right over our chocolate. And then I'm just going to let that do its thing. I'm not going to mess with it or stir it. I'm just going to set a timer for five minutes. After that, we'll go ahead and whisk it together until it's nice and smooth. And then we'll add just a pinch of salt to this just to balance out the sweetness. And then we will cover this and let it sit. So you can either let it sit at room temperature for two hours, which actually I, I think in, works better for making this into a buttercream where you're gonna add it to softened butter. Or you could put it in the fridge to speed up the process and that will give you, um, if you're just wanting to use the chocolate ganache to cover your cake and not turn it into a buttercream. So it's kind of versatile. You can choose which one you prefer. If you do decide to let it cool in the fridge, you will need to go in and stir it a few times. Otherwise it won't set like evenly. You'll have like the top will be, you know, set and the bottom will still be liquid. So you do need to make sure to stir it. At room temperature, it seems to pretty much set right away at least in the past it has for me with cream <laughs> so i don't know again this is with the half and half which I, is new for me okay five minutes is up i'm gonna just give this a stir everything should be nice and soft i had just a pinch of salt I'm going to mix in and I actually need to grab my whisk. Okay. Oh, this smells so good. <laughs> And it's going to look like it doesn't come together at first. But I'm just going to keep whisking. As you can see, the color's getting darker. The chocolate's melting. You want to make sure not to use a cheap chocolate here. The better the chocolate, probably the better the ganache. Now, mine was probably mid-grade. It wasn't the cheapest, but it wasn't you know, spe specialty chocolate either. 
That's a beautiful color. Okay, it's still going to be very liquidy, it looks like. So as it cools, I'm hoping we get a nice set so that we can whip this into a beautiful frosting. Okay, that looks pretty smooth. I don't think I have any lumps or bumps. Just verify down here, checking down the corners. That is so silky, beautifully smooth. Okay. All right, we need to make room because our cakes only have about six minutes left on them. Okay, this is already setting. Oh wow, that's good. All right, I'm just gonna cover this up, let it sit at room temperature for about two hours because obviously our cake won't be ready to frost anyway till about that time because we've gotta let it cool completely. And I'm making room right here for our cakes to come out. Okay, so this is what we want. I don't know if you can see, but on the edge here, how it's starting to separate from the pan, that's how I know these are done. So my, <laughs> it's funny, you can see how this one's coming over the edge a little bit. <laughs> my oven doesn't quite fit these two pans perfectly, so one of them has to like slightly sit on top of the other one. You guys know I have that little convection top microwave or not microwave convection top toaster oven thing that's my only oven so i'm gonna let these cool for about 15 to 20 minutes in the pans and then after that we will flip them out and let them finish cooling all the way before we try to ice them but they look great and they smell delicious so I'm excited <laughs> because I've been working on a yellow cake for quite some time. The ones that I've made in the past have not been a hit. So I'm excited and I'm hopeful that these will be it. So let me, these come out clean. Come out clean, no batter, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for 20 minutes, oops. 20 minutes so that I let these cool in the pan and then I will flip them out and let you take a look. Okay, so these have been cooling for about 20 minutes. Let's be honest, y'all, you know that you're here to watch me flip these out. <laughs> Let's just hope for the best. Anyway, if you try to take this out of the pan before we let them sit for a while, it'll kind of be mush and make a big mess. But if you leave it in the pan for too long, then you end up having it stick to the pan. So about that 15, 20 minute mark is good. And then you just wanna run something along the edge just to make sure that it's not stuck on the edge. You could use a butter knife here, but that also will scratch your pan. So try to find something super thin that's soft plastic spatula, something like that and run it all the way around to the bottom. Okay, okay, here we go. So not only do I only have a, one small oven that barely fits my pans, I also only have one small cooling rack. So I can't just take this and flip them out and let them go right onto there because I have two of these. So I'm going to attempt to just use a baking sheet, put it on top, flip it over and hope for the best. Yay, okay, great. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then I'm just going to pull, this should come right off since we've got it oiled on both sides. And then now comes the fun part where I try to move these over. Actually, it'd probably be best to use my, paper, my parchment paper. Okay. All right, one down, success. Next. This one was the one that rose a little bit 
over this side of the pan because like I was saying, this is slightly at an angle. It may make it interesting to decorate, but good news is it doesn't feel like it's stuck to the pan at all. I can slide this fairly smoothly. Okay. Let's see if we can do two for two. Because you all know my clumsy self. <laughs> okay. Yay! I'm so happy that we have <laughs> a success with this. Because you never know. See, this isn't quite big enough, so... I may have to let this overhang a little bit. That could be a mistake. It may end up falling. Okay, so now we all need, all we need to do is just let these cool completely. If you wanna let them cool for about an hour or two on your counter, you could then wrap these up with some cling film plastic wrap and put them in your freezer because they always say that it's very, a lot easier to um, ice these when they're frozen. So that's an option. Um, I think I'm just gonna let these cool and then I'm gonna get my piping bag probably to put the frosting on. So I'm gonna put these to the side and let them cool completely. If I try to frost it too soon, of course we know the frosting will melt. Okay, so our chocolate ganache is cooled to room temperature. It's been a little over two hours. I just want you to see the texture of this because it is delicious looking. So it's thickened. I don't know, maybe like pudding consistency. So that's just beautiful. We gave it a little taste test, <laughs> not gonna lie. Okay, and then I am going to turn, I could just take this and whip it and use just the chocolate ganache as the frosting, but I kinda wanna turn this into a chocolate ganache buttercream. So I'm going to use one stick of softened butter, very softened, and then I'm gonna pull this away from the edge just a little bit because it's okay, when I start mixing it, it probably will get stuck onto here, but eventually it'll all work out. So I'm gonna turn this on. And then once it starts a little bit, I'm gonna turn up the speed. And it's okay if you need to maneuver this or maneuver this. There we go. I guess it was, I needed it to be a little closer. Okay, so I just mixed that around for a few minutes. I'm not doing a completely cream, but I wanted to get it started creaming before I added in any of the powdered sugar. Um, the amount of powdered sugar really varies on what your preference is. So I'm going to use about a cup to start with, and I'll see if we need to add any more. Uh, make sure to start this on low speed or else you are going to get it all over yourself. <laughs> okay. Just mix in the ingredients. I love this mixer because you can just kind of maneuver the things, everything where you need them, rather than having to take everything out, scrape it down, take it out, scrape it down multiple times. This is kind of giving me the same effect. So everything is starting to be incorporated. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the speed.
Okay, so I hope you can see how much lighter and fluffier this is. You can see here is some unmixed where I just had the butter, and this is where it is nice and buttery, or nice and fluffy and beautiful. I do have some on the back of my spatula, so I will go ahead and scrape down the sides, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chocolate ganache. And this was again made with half and half, so it's not as, like I know when you make it with heavy cream, this will be like scoopable if you put, get it cold enough. This is room temperature, it's not chilled. So maybe if I chilled it and made it cold, it would be, you know, where you can scoop it for bonbons or confections, things like that. But I'm making this into a beautiful buttercream frosting. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this out on low to incorporate this all together. Kind of making this up as I go, going, on the fly hoping that I can get this to all incorporate well. So we'll see how it goes. That's just beautiful going around there. So I'm going to make sure I do still have some back here. I'm gonna pull this off. Just scrape it. Everything is incorporated because obviously I don't want pockets of butter, pockets of unmixed chocolate, powdered sugar, any of those things. I hope this works. Otherwise, I guess we're going with plan B, <laughs> which is my just regular chocolate buttercream, which is delicious. I was just wanting to try something kind of rich and heavenly with this one. Just trying something a little bit different. Okay, I just gave that a taste test. Wow, that is rich and delicious. Um, I do think, however, I'm going to add a half a cup more powdered sugar to it and see how that goes, slowly. <laughs> I'm gonna start a timer for five minutes and then just keep checking on it and see if we can get this whipped up nice. Okay, I'm gonna slow this down and check on it because it's been three and a half minutes. So I think that that will make a nice texture. I don't wanna take it too far because I don't wanna curdle it or turn it into butter but I think that's a nice consistency. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a taste test. Oh, wow. Okay, I was planning on only taking a little tiny lick, but I ate that whole spoonful. <laughs> okay, this is, this is really good. I'm gonna call this done. I'm gonna loosen this up so I can pull this out. Okay, so I'm gonna call this good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have a piping bag. I think it's easier to put this on my cake with a piping bag. Um, otherwise, I was saying earlier, you could you, you could freeze your cake so that when you go to spread it with a spatula, I don't have an offset spatula. I also don't have like a cake turning thing. So all I'm going to do is put this beautiful chocolate ganache buttercream, let's see, into my piping bag and then I have this just in a large cup to make it easier to fill. I think I can get it all in one bag, but I guess we'll find out if I have to refill it or not. I'm just gonna set this to the side because I probably will end up needing this spatula a little bit. And of course I've got, you know, a little bit on the outside just so I can make a little bit of a mess. 
because it wouldn't be me if I didn't. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get this. And there goes that. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I wish I didn't drop that into the dirty sink. Never fear, I have another one. This just does a nice job holding it upright. I'm just gonna set this over here. I just licked my fingers all over, so I'm gonna wash my hands before I assemble the cake. Okay, so again, like I said, I don't have a cake table or any of those fancy equipment for it. So I'm just gonna take my cake that's completely cooled and I'm going to, I think I'm gonna put the, I guess the ugly side, the, the domed side together. So I have the flat sides that touched my pans on the outside on the top and bottom. And then I'll just fill this with our buttercream. I've got plenty of it. So just try to center that. And then I'm just going to cut the end off of this. I want it to be pretty thick going on because I'm not using the piping bag for decorating. I'm just simply using it to fill. Okay, so let's see how this goes. I want to use about maybe a third for this layer. I'm just gonna set it back in there. And I'm going to put the pretty side up. And just push this down on here. Try to make sure it's all lined up. Then I'm gonna come in from the side and just fill in the space between here. Now I could have cut the cake off so that it would be completely flat. But this works just as well. If I was going to be building this multiple layers, I would want that, but this is just these two tiers, so. Okay. Now I'm going to just start in the center and put a pretty heavy layer on the top. Don't worry if the cake is not beautifully perfect because you'd be surprised what frosting or icing or buttercream will cover. So I know um, professional cake makers may turn over in their grave when they watch me decorate a cake, but I am more of a rustic <laughs> decorator. I think that you know that if you've been watching me for a while. So I'm just going to do this with my heart and Fill in the sides. Since we have so much of this icing, I'm not having to worry about saving any. <laughs> So I can put it on fairly thick. Okay. Grab this spatula again and I'm just gently going back and forth because I don't want to rough the edges of my cake and pull the crumbs out. I did not freeze my cake layers because we're wanting to enjoy this this evening. So I don't really wanna freeze them. Even though they would probably would defrost fairly quickly, I suppose, but even so. My freezer actually is pretty full too, so I guess there's multiple reasons why that's not a practical idea. Okay.
It's okay if it's not perfect. I doubt your family will judge you on that. <laughs> Just gonna go over the top one more time. Give it that little rustic look to it. Okay, and that is done. Now I will bring you in and let you have a look when we go to slice this this evening. That way you can have a look and then I'm gonna let you take a look at the side of it also, but so I'll bring you in once the celebrations begin. Happy birthday to you. See what you think, you're the cake taste tester. Mmm. Does it good. taste like good yellow cake? Mm hmm. Would you prefer a different frosting or do you like that frosting? I've never made this one before. I like it. <laughs> and if you're not a chocolate fan, you can always top this with some vanilla bean buttercream or whatever your favorite frosting choice is. So the general consensus from everyone was this cake tasted even better with the vanilla bean buttercream that I made. Yes, I made this cake more than one time just to make sure the recipe was just right for you guys. I actually added in a little bit of almond extract into the cake batter and that really leveled this up. But this one takes the cake. I wanna thank you so much for joining me while we're enjoying making Matt's birthday cake. This is just a nice classic yellow cake that can be used for birthdays, anniversaries, or any special occasion, or just when you want cake. <laughs> Don't forget to check out my blog at grainsandsmallplaces.net. I'll link it below also where you can check out this recipe and a whole bunch of other recipes all dedicated strictly to fresh milled flour. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And thanks for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. <laughs>